This lecture is going to be about translating position and velocity graphs. Translating a graph means representing the same exact motion on a new type of graph. For this video, we're only going to focus on translating from position time graphs to velocity time graphs and back from velocity time to position time graphs. So we'll start off by going from position to velocity graphs. To translate from a position time to a velocity time graph, we can use the fact that the slope of the position time graph is equal to the velocity at that time. So because the velocity graph is showing you what the velocity is at that time, and we can find that using the slope of the position time graph, we can translate from one to the other. So we'll show you an example of that using this position time graph here. I'm going to start by breaking this up into sections. Just I can see that there are different periods of time where the graph has different slopes. So I'm going to draw these vertical lines that just indicate that at that line, the slope is going to change. So the velocity is going to change there as well. These vertical lines don't have any physical meaning beyond this is at a certain time. Okay, I can see that the run here is four seconds and the rise is positive four meters. So that means that the slope is positive four meters over four seconds, which is equal to one meter per second. And I remember that the slope on a position time graph is equal to the velocity. So that's the object's velocity for the first four seconds, positive one meters per second. For the next portion, I can see that it's just a perfectly flat line, which means it has a slope of zero and therefore a velocity of zero. In the next section, I can see that I have a run of two seconds and a rise of negative four meters. So that means that the velocity is negative four meters over two seconds, which is negative two meters per second. And in the last part, I can see I have a run of two seconds and a rise of six, like this. That line keeps going, but as long as we can get some slope from the line, that's the same slope for the rest of the line. So it's going over two and up six, so that means it's six meters over two seconds which is equal to three meters per second. So within each section, the velocity is staying constant. The slopes aren't getting steeper or shallower within each section of time. They only change when you go from one section to the next. So that means that on the velocity graph, we're just going to record horizontal flat lines that show that the velocity is staying the same for each of those sections. So in the first section of the graph, I know that the velocity is positive one. So we'll just record that. It's staying at positive one for four seconds. In the second part of the graph, the velocity is just zero. In the third part of the graph, the velocity is negative two meters per second. And in the fourth part, it's positive three. So that's what the velocity time graph would look like for that position graph. We're now gonna go into translating from velocity time to position time graphs. There are two different ways we can translate from a velocity time to a position time graph. For both, we can start from any position on the PT graph because the VT graph tells us nothing about the starting position. This is really important. When you're translating from velocity to position, the velocity graph tells you nothing about what position you start at, so you can choose the position yourself. So we can either use the fact that the velocity is equal to the slope of the position graph and then draw lines on the position time graph with the correct slopes, or we can use the fact that the area under the curve of the velo or we can use the fact that the area under the curve of the velocity time graph is equal to the displacement in that time. I'm going to give you an example of using each one. I'm going to start with the first one using just the fact that the slope is equal to the velocity. And before I start, I'm going to draw those vertical lines that separate different parts of the graph by the time that they're happening at, just because I have these different sections with different velocities. Okay, so I can see that I'm going to have a velocity of two for three seconds. So that means that on the position graph, my slope is going to be two for three seconds. So I'm going to draw two up, one over, and keep drawing that line until I have this. So I can see that this is a line with a slope of two that lasts for three seconds. Next, I can see that I'm going to have a velocity of negative one for five seconds. So I'm just gonna go down one, just going down one and over one like that for five seconds. After I can see I have a slope of zero, so that means the velocity is zero. So the position is not changing at all here. So that's just a flat line there. And finally, I have a velocity of positive three, so that means that the slope is gonna be positive three over one, and it'll look like this. So that's one way of translating from a velocity graph to a position graph using the slope of the line of the position graph. The other way is to use the area under the curve, which is what we'll do now. 
Okay, so I remember that the area under the curve of a velocity graph is equal to the change in position. So I just need to find the area for each section and then record that as the change in position on the position graph. And again, before I do that, I'm just gonna section this off into the specific velocities that it has. Okay, now I'm gonna go through and figure out what the area under the curve is for each section. And just as a reminder, the area under the curve is the area between the line and the x-axis, like this. So I can see that this has an area of two times three, two meters per second times three seconds, which is equal to positive six meters. Because when I multiply meters per second times second, it just comes out to be meters. So that means that the change in position here is going to be positive six. Over those three seconds, the position is going to be added two by six meters. So if I start at zero and change by positive six in three seconds like this, this is what that line is going to look like. So that's the first part of my graph. In the second part, I can see that I have this negative area. It's below the x-axis, so we consider that to be negative. And when I find that area, I find that it's equal to negative five, just negative one meters per second times five seconds. So the change in position here is going to be negative five. So if it's at six and it goes down by negative five, this is what it's gonna look like, down by negative five in those five seconds. So the final position will be here, and this is what that line will look like. Okay, this next section is pretty simple. I can see that there's no area at all. So that means that the area is zero meters. So in those two seconds, the position is going to change by zero meters. So it's gonna be at the same position as it was before. And lastly, I can see that this last area here is also positive six meters. And this time it covers that in two seconds. So that means that it's gonna go up six in two seconds. And that is what that line is going to look like. So that's how you translate from velocity time graphs back to position time graphs.